for all varieties. Save $3 on juicy red ripe strawberries, $4.99 for a one pound package. Save a dollar on fresh Portuguese rolls, $4.99 for a package of six. A sweet treat, Magnum ice cream bars, $5.39 for a three pack. 20% off all varieties and sizes of Rachel Ray's pet food. Visit our website at www.marketplace.bn for more super specials. Good evening. You're watching Bermuda Tonight. It's Friday, May 10th. I'm Gary Moreno, and thank you for joining us tonight. While significant headway is being made in terms of addressing the concerns of the Ireland's Prisons Officers Association as its members continue their work to rule action. Wayne Keynes, the Minister of National Security today, provided the House of Assembly with an update on just what is being done to return the Ireland's prisons to a state of normalcy. We have more in this report. Minister Keynes outlined a strategic plan which addressed, among other things, security and facility upgrades. To that end, Minister Keynes explained that Westgate Correctional Facility had been experiencing a limited hot water supply, a situation which will soon be sorted out, he said, as a new industrial water heater was recently approved by the Cabinet. Cabinet also recently approved the purchase of a second industrial washer for Westgate, and it is expected to be in place and operational by July this year. The minister added major leaks in the water tank at Westgate, repairs to which he reported, are now being carried out. According to Minister Keynes, a major aspect of the plan is a security matrix with significant aspects either completed or are being worked on. These include the upgrade of duress systems at all the island's correctional facilities, upgrades to the fire alarm and telephone system, as well as the placing of a new UPS system. There were further upgrades, he went on, to the CCTV systems, with new cameras being installed and others replaced. There were also improvements to the camera software at Westgate, he points out. Meantime, Cabinet has now approved the budget for a CCTV upgrade at the co-ed facility. Security fencing has also begun at that location, with an expected completion date of June this year. As we previously reported, representatives from the Ministry of Works last week visited Westgate in order to put together a list of priorities for maintenance, following which the POA executive and Works Department staff drew up a list of the pressing outstanding issues and a plan for moving forward on them. All that notwithstanding, Mr. Keynes recognized the most significant concerns of the Prisons Officers Association are a salary increase and the fact that they're now being asked to pay into government's GEHI plan. However, there has been no consensus on these matters between the POA and government's negotiating team. Terms of reference of an agreement have been drawn up, though, and submitted to the Attorney General's chambers for approval. Once those terms are signed off on, the issues of GEHI payments and a salary increase for corrections officers can be sent to arbitration, the minister stated. Meantime, come July this year, personnel from HM Prisons will be on Ireland to review all Department of Corrections facilities and will also provide an independent assessment of all Department of Corrections processes and procedures. Elsewhere, Minister Keynes addressed some of the other issues regarding manpower and health at the island's correctional facilities. The Forensic Mental Health Unit, there are prisoners that have uh, mental health um, issues. We believe that we're discussing with the Ministry of Health and with the Hospitals Board the proper solution to deal with that. With reference, which, with reference to the staffing, there are 186 prison officers. There is a deficit of 32 officers. In September of 2018, we hired 25 officers. On the 26th, on, in the middle of March, we commenced a new um, uh, scheme to get new officers in and we expect to get 22 new officers um, this year for their process and so we believe that re that um, remain, remains a work in progress. The outstanding issues center around mold and the facilities I and mean, officers being sick and, and, and that's a concern That is, and, and the officers should be concerned rightly so. That is something that I think we need to now focus on and to fix. Um, we believe out Ultimately, in the security of the officers, and we outlined today 
all of the things that are being done with reference to the security concerns. But the issues of health and safety, they're significant. I accept, I have family members that work in the Department of Corrections, that that is something that continue, continues to be a work in progress. There are questions around the senior leadership. Um, why um, is uh, Colonel Lamb still uh, seconded and coming out of the budget? Mm -hmm. The issues of hiring do not fall under the minister, they fall under the Public Service Commission, and that is something for them to manage. I can say that the Acting Commissioner, Kiva uh, May Joe Benjamin, has my full support. It was Kiva May Joe Benjamin who put together the strategic plan in 2017. She has full dominion over the staff, over the budget, over the key leadership um, initiatives within the department. So she's not working, working as a de facto leader. She is running the facility. She has my, her and her leadership team have my full support and my full confidence. The issues, again, uh, Gary, center around the physical plant, around the security and around the salary parts of the negotiations. Our prison officers are important and we want to make sure that they get the proper support that they need. With reference to the prisoners, we adhere to the Mandela guidelines. We know that the, the um, training has been uh, suspended. We know, excuse me, the training and the, the uh, classes have been suspended. That's why we want to get the, the officers back at the table. We want to get these programs started as soon as possible so we can regularize the visits, the training, the, the, um, the education programs to get everybody back on their, on their schedules. And a call tonight for the government to take full responsibility for the running of the Westgate Correctional Facility. It comes from former Premier Michael Dunkley, who today took the National Security Minister to task over the status of that facility, where management and, of course, prisons officers are at an impasse over working conditions. Well, as Terai Trot reports, Mr. Dunkley says the Progressive Labour Party government can no longer continue to blame the former OBA government for their woes. Smith's North MP Michael Dunkley wishes the Progressive Labour Party government would move on from the OBA's record in government and focus on its own responsibilities. You know, people expect them to deliver and not just take cover on what happened in the past. Look, it was great to get back in the House today um, because that's the place we do the people's business. But you have to be concerned at a number of challenges that the PLP faced and they're not handling well or they've embarrassed the people of Bermuda. And corrections is a prime example. The National Security Minister Wayne Keynes delivered a ministerial statement to the House of Assembly in which he outlined the main issues of dispute between management and the Prison Officers Association. He also revealed hot water was in short supply at the prison. However, Mr. Dunkley was not impressed with the minister's statement. It fell far short of the transparency and accountability that's required because when questioned, as the opposition is allowed to do, we found glaring holes in the statement that were never addressed simple comments the minister could have made to bring a more accountability and understanding what's going on. For example, he talked about new recruits being hired in training courses and, and you know, I think it was 25 people that were mentioned. But what he failed to mention was, and it came out when we questioned him, that we asked the question, uh, Commissioner Lamb has been seconded somewhere else under the PLP government. Uh, will he be coming back and when will he be coming back? And to my amazement, when the Honorable Minister answered the question, he said, he's not coming back. And without a permanent prisons commissioner in place, Mr. Dunkley sees continued instability in the future. One is, you have an acting commissioner of corrections, who I have the greatest respect for, but you take away the number one person. You have no intention of bringing him back, but you haven't told the POA or the hierarchy of corrections that uh, they're not coming back, and how do we fill that position that's important. Secondly, the acting commissioner can only stay in that position for so long and be effective because they don't have the full authorities. The former premier saved his heaviest criticism for the lack of hot water at the prison. When I had the opportunity to question, I said, uh, well, when did this limit availability start? Or has there been any time when there has been a total lack of hot water in the facility? And to my aghast, the minister said yes for nine months. Now, Gary, any other facility would have been shut down. The minister announced that programs and courses at Westgate were suspended due to the ongoing work to rule action, causing Mr. Dunkley to ask questions. And visits. When I questioned the minister on the restricted, he said there were no programs going on. That's not restricted. Restricted means it's limited. It doesn't mean that there's none of them going on. Gary, how are we going to rehabilitate those people? How are the, the, our brothers and sisters who are incarcerated going to have the opportunity to get on a better footing in life if they're locked down in their cell and they have no availability of programs? The minister said there was, there was the, the facility is no longer on lockdown. Um, the minister did say that, but they're still on work to rule. 
And stay with us. More news and a weekend weather report when we come back. As we continue now, government said it saved an increase of $84 per person for annual insurance premiums by capping the standard health care benefit and premiums this year. Premier David Byrd spoke with us at the House of Assembly on the latest health care financing reform. I've heard commentary about how come we're not seeing a reduction in rates. What we are seeing is a freeze in rates, and that is to make sure that health insurance remains affordable. At the same time, as the government promised to advance the national health plan, we are still crunching the actual numbers on that particular plan, which will provide a basic level of care, which will be better than what, the hosp what HIP is right now, and provide more coverage for future care and others inside of the community. It is a journey. Um, we are not there yet. The challenge which we have is that money that was from the government plans which was going to the private insurers, they were taking money out of those government plans and they were not going to healthcare. And over the last five years, that has amounted to a total of $80 million. What we have to do is to make sure that the money for the government plans that needs to be spent on health care is spent on health care. I have told the insurers that we will continue to consult to make sure that it's not adverse um, issues which take place. We want to make sure that we can work through these changes collectively. But the fact is, as our population ages and as our population gets older, we have to make changes in the way that healthcare is administered or else the government will not be able to afford it. Premier Byrd says Bermuda needs to be on par with other countries who have adjusted their retirement age to match a rising life expectancy. 65 is what 65 used to be, and people are active and want to continue to contribute. And so we are following through on our promise, but that is just for the public sector. There's going to be a wider conversation about the private sector as well, and the social insurance fund and how we can make changes on that. The minister has said that those measures will be coming next year. We're taking set one right now with public officers, and we also have to admit that age discrimination is real. There are people who are 60 who can't find work who should be able to work, and we are dealing with those particular issues. Some of them will be um, absorbed into government. Others will be things in which we're working collectively with the private sector. So, for instance, when we have these hotel projects and there's this issue about when we have um, you know, young people that need experience versus old people that have that experience, pairing these people up on job sites so that they can pass on that knowledge, both of them have the opportunity to work, and that's what we need to make sure that we do. Well, following the municipal election for Hamilton, those elected were sworn in inside the city hall this morning. Retaining their seats were current common councillors John Harvey, Dennis Tucker, Larry Scott and Nicholas Swan, while Jennifer Brimmer was also elected, becoming a new member of the council. Businessman Michael Branco was unsuccessful in his bid, but missed out by a mere five votes. Now, during the swearing-in ceremony, Mayor of Hamilton Charles Gosling claimed this team will in fact be working together. Meetings here should be 
like the Parliament, like the Senate, that each member gets to speak once on, on the subject. And I don't think that's, that's great for finding a, 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 a common goal. That's, that's great for scoring points on, on the opposition. But to try to find some common ground, it just doesn't work. Um, so um, uh, while I have a, a, a business mind in terms of trying to seek efficiencies, I think it's very important that when we have these meetings that if it takes three hours to do two hours of work, I'd prefer to take that extra hour because at the end of the day, we come out together rather than coming out divided. Well, cricket season is supposed to start this weekend. Let's find out from AccuWeather now whether in fact any games will be played. AccuWeather is presented by BFNM Insurance Group. We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. This AccuWeather forecast has been brought to us by the folks at the BFNM Insurance Group, uh, and we have a pretty decent setup here for the next few days. Uh, the big trend that we are talking about is a warming trend into the second half of the weekend and on Monday. And if you've been missing the warmer weather, it's probably a good thing. It's been a cool day out there across the island with this breeze from the north. Not much in the way of rainfall. In fact, satellite estimated rain shows showers way up there, hidden behind the AccuWeather banner, and also a few down to the east of the Turks and Caicos Islands. So we're dry, but it has been a little cool for this time of the year. 69 degrees across the island. Humidity is between 55 and 60 percent. That wind from the northeast has been uh, between around 12 and 18 miles per hour, uh, 10 to 20 knots for the most part for the balance of the day, uh, and uh, they remain fairly active, keeping us uh, a little cool there. So that refrigerator, that refrigerating breeze will persist, but uh, it is weak enough that the waves have uh, slackened off a bit. Waves on the outside, three to six feet on the inside, uh, under two feet for the most part. So upcoming tides, we have low tide coming up soon, 7.45 this Friday evening. If you're tuning in on the uh, web, uh, you'll notice that uh, on Saturday, low tide 8.44 in the morning, and then into the morning hours, eight, uh, 2.34 p.m. will be our uh, early to mid-afternoon high tide. So it looks like a pretty decent boating setup up for the weekend. Tonight will still stay breezy, lows around 64, still certainly some waves out there, but three, six, three to six footers will be more manageable than what they would be if the wind were stronger. Still a refreshing breeze tomorrow, a little warmer, 74. We're beginning that warming trend uh, and we'll watch as this northeast refrigerating wind direction begins to kind of give way to more of a, an east and southeast flow. Eventually, by late Saturday, we're looking at more of a flow from the south, which is truly going to begin to warm us back up in a significant way. As we head down into the Caribbean, spotty showers, maybe a thunderstorm into Jamaica, Barbados, and Trinidad and Tobago. No tropical threats from a hurricane or tropical storm or tropical depression standpoint. That's good news. Uh, and again, we need to keep an eye on things as we approach hurricane season, which is officially starting on June 1st. The Gateway forecast, a cool spring day in Toronto uh, and New York City is a little cool, not bad, though 66 degrees. Boston, 65, pleasant weather. Scattered showers and storms will make some noise into Atlanta. Better chance for stronger storms into parts of the southeastern United States into Sunday, which is Mother's Day, uh, into Miami. Scattered showers, 88 degrees, pretty toasty there. And in London, we have some spring showers at 59. Bringing it back home, here's the big trend. Temperatures rising back into the mid and eventually upper 70s. So we're going from below average to near and even above normal. Uh, upper 70s are going to be a nice change, but they will come with some showers and maybe even a rumble of thunder on Tuesday. Showers likely Monday night uh, into Tuesday. Uh, and even during the day Monday, we'll have to introduce the chance for some occasional scattered rain showers. Thanks for tuning in. Enjoy your weekend. AccuWeather was presented by BFNM Insurance Group. My name is Kevin Roberts. I'm a taxi driver slash ambassador. My father's with BFNM, so am I. My, half of my family always been seen to be with Bermuda Fire Marine. I tried a different provider at one time, but I wasn't too happy with the competition because back then it took too long to settle claims. They questioned every claim, and I never really had that problem with BFNM. I'm quite happy with it. Welcome back. Well, in case you didn't know it, the city of Hamilton is well aware of markings along the street set down well ahead of the Bermuda holiday. But now Mayor Charles Gosling has a message for those of you who've placed tape and other markings down already. 
our position is is that we will actually right now be taking up all of those names and please don't put them down anything in, in, in chalk or, or in paint because we, we will remove that entirely and will never ever allow that to, 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 uh, uh, to be there but um, it, it's a little early right now to, to, to be putting your name there and claiming your spot maybe the Monday before May 24th will, will, will be the time to, to do that and we will allow that, that, that claim of that area to, uh, to, to, to remain but prior to that, that's, that's, that's going to be pulled out. And when asked about the possibility of the corporation selling or renting spots for the day, the mayor indicated that at present they have no authority to do so. Uh, we have given that uh, uh, a lot of consideration. The, the, our main problem is that we don't have the power enforcement. So if you were to come to corporation and rent your little spot and I was to show up uh, uh, the, the, the day before and camp out in front, you come, we, we start getting into words, and, that, and, and then the police are going to have to be called and, and to, to, to separate and, and, and to uh, you know, be the judge and jury at that, at that time. And uh, the, our police force has, has other things to, to, uh, to, to really to take care of. We would like to be in a position where, where, where we could do something like this, but until uh, we have a city rangers program or, or something where, where members, of, uh, or, well, members of our staff have the power of enforcement, and it, it, it just unfortunately won't be able to happen. And keep viewing when we come back. The man who knows the score, Earl Basden, will have all of the night sports news. You can count on us. Save a dollar on fresh ground hamburger, only two ninety nine a pound. Imported broccoli crumbs, just two ninety nine per pound. Blue Diamond Almond Breeze Milk, five ninety nine for select varieties of sixty four ounce cartons. Save two sixteen on Schmidt Old Time Honey Wheat or Spit Top Sliced Bread, three ninety nine for a twenty ounce loaf. Arm and Hammer Laundry Detergent, five ninety nine for select varieties of fifty ounce bottles. Visit our website at www.marketplace.pm for more super specials. Quick reminder to Manchester United supporters, your team is not in the European Champions League finals this year. Here's Il Bezen, though, with the rest of tonight's sports report. The Confederation of North, Central American and Caribbean Association football that make up CONCACAF held the draw for the 2020 CONCACAF Women's Under-17 Championships. Bermuda has been drawn in Group E and will face Mexico, Trinidad and Tobago and the Dominican Republic. Mark Wade, the president of the Bermuda Football Association, said this is where Bermuda wants to be, facing the bigger nations. The draw, is, uh, I think, is worth reflecting that the groups that were being placed in or... or uh, where we're being seated is, our, is basically a reflection of Bermuda's performance in these age groups. And as, you, as we saw with the under-17 boys, they were drawn in the championship group stage. And you have the similar thing with the girls. So it's, it's the signs of progress. And the better you get, the, the, the tougher things get as well. Yes, it's a tough group, um, but this is, this is where we want to be. We want to be in these rounds and we want to continue to improve and, and do well. So the, the girls will have some experiences to draw on. And um, we're, we're hoping to see them do well against Mexico, Dominican Republic, and the Trinidad and Tobago. 
The Rapishad round of the 69th Argo Group Gold Cup was expected to produce close quarter racing as eight teams fought for one of four spots in the quarterfinal round, and it delivered with a gusty and shifty northeasterly breeze changing headings nearly every second. Skippers Chris Poole from USA, Lucy McGregor from UK, Atator Battassini from Italy, and Eric Monin from Switzerland led their crews to the quarterfinals of the $100,000 match racing regatta hosted by the Royal Bermuda Yacht Club. Meanwhile, the 17th year of the Renaissance Reed Junior Gold Cup continued on the Great Sound. George Lee Rush from New Zealand continues to lead with 14 net points. Rush won the final race of the day. In second place is Matteo Capasso from Cayman Islands, who has 33 net points. Bermuda's Christian Eben is in third with 37 net points. Another Bermuda sailor, Sebastian Kemp, is in fourth with 37 points. And Yanni Burrs from Netherlands rounds out the top five sailors after day two with 39 net points. Dowry Rollins and his Sussex Seconds teammates and Somerset Seconds drew their second 11 championship South Group match at the Blackstone Academy ground. Sussex started the day at 97 for 7, but the tail wagged and they would reach 183 all out. Somerset then went back to back, and when stumps were drawn, they had reached 195 for 4 after 47 overs. Rollins, who did not bowl in the first inning, did bowl in the second and finished with figures of 7 overs, no maidens, none for 29. Nathan Armstrong, a Carifta Games silver and bronze medalist, competed in the Capasic County Outdoor Track and Field Championships. Armstrong will pick up two silver medals during the event. After finishing ninth in the men's 800-meter race with a time of 2.04.52, Armstrong would then finish second in the men's 1,600-meter race in a time of 4.36.20. Armstrong would then close out with a second-place finish in the 3,200-meter race with a time of 9.55.89. Connor White competed in the Ontario Police College Criterium recently. The race is part of the Ontario Cycling Cup Series. This was White's first race competing in the Elite Category 1-2 after moving up from the Elite 3 category. White managed to cross the line in a second group bunch sprint at the end of the 90-minute race. He clocked a time of 1.25.45, finishing 11th overall as there was a breakaway of 8 riders 1 minute ahead of the group. Marina's Noah Brown was back in action, this time competing in the $28,000 Men's Pembroke Management Montreal Squash Open in Canada. Brown took on Sean Durelli from Canada and went down in straight games 11-6, 11-5, 11-4. Meanwhile, the Bermuda Squash Rackets Association Club's weekend classic got underway at the Bermuda Squash Rackets Association Club last evening with matches placed across four divisions. Only one match needed five games to decide a winner and it came in the B division that saw Colin Cooper come from two games down to defeat Adam Hawley, 6'11", 2'11", 11'7", 11'8", 11'8". Braxton Stowe and his St. Louis University baseball teammates smacked 20 hits, including four home runs in their 18-6 win over the Rhode Island Rams. Stowe hit his second home run of the season in the seventh inning and then cleared the bases with a three-run double off the center field wall in the eighth. Stowe would finish the game going three for four with four RBIs and two runs scored. A total of 224 points were scored inside the Bermuda College Gymnasium as the Bermuda Basketball League season continued. Game 1 saw the Somerset Tsunamis defeat the Southampton Wolfpack 59-52. Dean Jones scored a game-high 22 points to lead the Somerset Tsunamis to victory. He would also add 12 rebounds, 2 assists, and 5 steals. Luke Madeira scored 10 points for the Southampton Wolfpack. He also had 9 rebounds, 2 assists, and 3 steals. Game 2 saw the Devonshire Chargers defeat the Warwick Rimrockers 70-63. I'm Earl Basden with Bermuda Broadcasting Sports. Price Rate is your one-stop shop with something for everyone. Household goods for kitchen, bedroom, and bathroom. Aisles of bulk groceries at value prices. A complete selection of fresh meat and produce. And an extensive range of frozen items to cover every meal. Wines from around the world and beer and liquor at discount prices. Visit Price Right at our two locations in Pembroke and Warren. There's always something new and always something for everyone.
And this is where we leave you tonight. Thank you for viewing. God bless and do enjoy your weekend.